spotlight you after we're live. All right, good morning, everybody. We're gonna get started a little in a little bit. We'll get started right at nine o'clock, but we're gonna wait for folks to filter in. Got a big crowd today, so really excited. And we'll, uh, yeah, we'll get started here in a, in a couple minutes. Still good with the sound? Sound is great. Okay. Good. Good. So that hold, holds out. Then. We are live. We're just letting people yep. filter in. Yep. For those of you who are joining us, I'll say this again at the top of the hour when we go live. But uh, for those of you who are joining us right now, um, you can open up your chat box, which is at the bottom bar of your screen. And in a little bit, Amanda uh, will put in the link to the poll EV, which is what we'll be using primarily to do polls. Um, we'll also have handouts in the chat box. And if you can't or don't want to use the poll EV, you can also use the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. That's the main way that we will interact with folks. Um, uh, other than the poll EV and you can ask questions, you can let Amanda and I, and I know if you're having any problems um, and we'll be monitoring that throughout. So, and again, I'll mention this again here. Oh, it's nine o'clock, so I'll mention it again right now. Um, we're gonna get started here in just one second, everybody. Thank you all for, for joining us. Um, like I just mentioned, please uh, find in the chat box, which is at the bottom bar of your screen, um, the link to the poll everywhere function, which we'll be using to uh, use polls. You can also use the Q&A box um, in order to, uh, to interact with us as well. If you, can't, uh, if you can't use the poll EV, the chat will not be available for you to type to us, but we'll be monitoring the Q&A function. So um, we know that there'll be several people still filtering in throughout the morning, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you all for joining us on our on our Tuesday webinar on worker safety. We're here with Phil Spezio with the Washington County Senior Safety Officer with Washington County and the, the man behind Safety Days, a wonderful event in Washington County that I wanted to be sure to, to mention. I've been to it. It's an amazing training event that Phil puts on and, uh, and it's, uh, it's really incredible to see all the, all the people out there get, uh, get trained and uh, get a lot of good information. Phil, how long have you been with the county? Uh, about 14 years. All right. So you've got a great you got a great speaker today. Um, please let us know if you have any issues in the. Uh, you can let us know in the chat box or in the uh, Q and A box, and we'll be putting polls and uh, and handout links in the chat box as well. So, Phil, I'm going to turn it over to you. Have a great webinar. We'll uh, we'll be uh, uh, watching in the background if you need anything. Right. Great, thanks, Adam, and thanks for the shout out for safety days. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people help put that on. So um, it's definitely a, a group effort from lots of different people and it's grown each year. So um, we'll start out real quick. We'll get going here because we got just about an hour. Um, it's a fair amount of material to cover in an hour. So but we'll, we'll um, brush the surface of many different topics um, related to the positive safety and health culture today. So every day is a safety day. Every day is a safety day. That's one of the things we have to be sure that we understand and instill in our culture. So that's one of the reasons why we want to cultivate a positive safety and health culture. So got a quick poll here. Um, see where people on are working, who they work for. So pretty good town representation, pretty good county, city and village, state and federal. Great. All right. So good, um, good diversification. Good audience. So great. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to, to jump on here. So, so where, what is your job? What actually do you do as far as your position is? Oh, good. All right. Super. Lots of engineers, lots of highway DPW superintendents, commissioners, administrators. Um, good, 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 good variety. So that's great. This would be Perfect for the program. Now, about how long have you been with your current position? Oh, 
Awesome. Lots of years of experience here. So lots of years of experience. Great. All right. And uh, whereabouts are you from? I love this poll. He fills in the state nicely. Look at all over. Okay. Super, super. Wonder how many of these places there's been snow and we got a little bit of snow here. So, all right, so the why of it, let's get going. Why cultivate a positive safety and health culture? So effective safety training, right? One of the things we wanna be sure of is we ask somebody to do something, they know how to do it safely. Trust, and we'll talk a lot about trust. So I'm just gonna, just gonna mention that now. Morale obviously is a big deal when you start talking about efficiencies. Um, ensuring that safety is a cultural value. We'll speak about that a little bit. And then, you know, the bottom line, the why of it is allow everybody the opportunity to go home whole every day. Um, that's the number one goal. So how many of you have ever had a, or experienced a, a job accident? Almost, okay, 50, a little over 50% anyway. And then if you add in the people that knew of someone that had one, we're up, we're pushing 80%. Yeah, we're pushing 80% of our population has either been involved with a job accident or knew somebody who had been in a job accident. So good. Okay. All right. So here's a picture of this and just a couple of barrels on the side of a road, right? No real big deal. Well, just a little bit before that picture was taken, um, this is what was next to the barrels in the side of the road there. So um, this is this is the why of it. This is what we want to try to do um, to prevent you know something something like this from occurring. So the driver walked out. The driver's fine of this vehicle. The operator, um, but certainly um, under uh, different circumstances, could have been um, serious serious injuries with this. So I've got a little audio clip to play, and um, then we'll get to the rest of the program. County Control, HT-23. County Control, HT-23. County Control, I'm on the south side of Patch Hill, County Route 21. I've overturned and I'm in a brook. Receive County Route 21. You've overturned into a brook. Are you able to get out? Negative County. Receive just confirming you're on County Route 21 or County Route 12. I'm on County Route 21 on the south side of Hatch Hill Road on the sharp turn. The truck is upside down, and I'm in a brook. I'm attempting to get the window open. Gracie, we'll get help out there. Zero seven. County Control, HD 23, you do copy. That's affirmative, we're dispatching help at this time. Roger, County, the door's pinned against the uh, mud here, and I'm attempting to get the window open. Are you injured, HT-23? No injuries, County, but the truck is upside down. Whatever, it's on a White Hall Patrol, it's counted at 21 for a motor vehicle accident locations. 317, Route 4, Kingsbury. County Control H5. Whatever State Police Greenville Patrol for Whitehall. Nine here, my poor stars. Control I, uh, 4, Whitehall Fire. A rollover motor vehicle accident, a dump truck. County 21, you broke uh, off. I copy oh, 20 Hill Road. Within 10 minutes. Let's see, three Possibly property damage only. <laughs> County Route 21, Town of Whitehall, near the intersection of Holcombville Road, where a county 
DPW truck rollover. He states he's not injured, however, he's unable to get out of the vehicle. at Holcombville Road. A rollover motor vehicle accident. Highway truck. Operator is not injured, however, in the vehicle. The vehicle is in a small truck. It's 757. Roger, thank you, Clayton. I'll be up there. Be careful. Roger. H5, HD23. All right, so I still uh, have some pretty strong feelings when I hear that. It's uh, it's amazing. So a couple of things just to clean up there. You may have caught that the dispatcher um, came out with, are you on County Route 12 or County Route 21? It's because the side road intersection that um, HT23 was talking about, um, it, was a, it was a different road. It was Holcombville Road as opposed to Hatch Hill Road. So there was a little controversy there. That's why he wanted to make sure it was 21. Um, and, you know, he's making that 911 call, you know, he just, just literally was upside down in that truck. So how calm and cool and collected he was, is just amazing. And we've done some training with 911 calls. So, um, that is great. He did a phenomenal job. I thought in communicating what his situation was, um, to the dispatch, to the public safety. And also, um, you know, uh, H5, kudos to him is, you know, people, you know, were listening to this on the radio, they wanted to go and help. And he actually, um, you know, said to one of the operators coming in to help, they be careful, you know, type thing, and checking on, checking on the driver, make sure um, he was okay. So, um, and you can tell in the voice um, from H5, his transmissions early compared to the transmission when he was calling to say the road was back open, certainly was a big lift and uh, load off his shoulder. So anyway, talking about the operator, thank God he was okay. And he, he walked away a um, couple little bruises and that's it. So, so, so very fortunate. So this could be a husband, a wife, dad, mom, grandpa, grandma, 
um, friend, coworker, and seasoned veteran. So this can happen even when you set up the control measures, um, preventive measures. Um, unfortunate things can still happen, but it kind of puts the odds in your favor a little bit. Risk, can we minimize risk? Yes. Can we get rid of all risk? No, there's risk in everything we do. Um, so we just got to figure out what's an acceptable risk, what's the value in what we're, 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 we're doing, right? Um, it, it's the speed, what, how fast does it really have to be done, that sort of thing, um, and, and constantly measure that risk versus reward. We do a lot of that in the fire service. One of the things I like about my job is I get to work with a lot of different people doing a lot of different things, from fire and EMS to sheriffs, corrections. Um, and DPW folks, DSS, public health, that sort of thing. So um, risk and everything we do, we got to do everything we can to minimize that risk. So here's a, here's a quick risk analysis type thing. If we do things um, not all that frequently, but there's not a lot of risk involved in it, doesn't necessarily keep me up at night. Low frequency, low risk. High frequency and low risk, we're doing it all the time. Um, very little risk involved in the task. One of the things you have to be careful of here is complacency, uh, but again, doesn't necessarily keep me up at night. If we're doing something all the time, we're doing it often, and even though there is some high risk involved, we're probably pretty good at it. Um, probably got some good systems built in place, got some good training performed, and, and have some good people doing those tasks. So high frequency, high risk, yeah, we got to pay attention to them, make sure that we keep everybody trained that's doing those sort of things. Um, but again, it doesn't, it doesn't concern me quite as much as the bottom one. When you're talking about something that we do not very often, we do it very infrequently, um, but there's high risk associated with that. Um, that's when we really want to tune back in here and say, hey, what are we doing here? What can we do to make sure that the risk um, isn't to the point where it's making the, to the job unsafe? So talking about vision, just to kind of give a clear picture of where we are, what we're going to try to do. Um, culturally, culturally ingrained safety into everything we do, a deep-seated value type thing. We'll talk again about the value shortly. Um, we don't want anybody to get hurt to the point they can't do the same thing they could do before they got injured. Zero injuries incurred by um, anybody in, the, in their communities, right? That's what we do, DPW folks. We try to engineer, build, um, maintain roads in a, in, a, in a safe and healthy condition as much as we possibly can. Um, zero dollars lost from property damage. We don't budget. I can see a fair amount of DPW superintendents on and commissioners and things like that. If you walked into your board and said, hey, I need an extra $10,000 this year. We're going to, you know, um, drive into the garage door when we're backing out or something that, that they're, they're not really going to want to give you the $10,000, right? Um, to put it in a polite way. And then last but not least, compliance with all safety and health laws. Yeah, compliance is important, um, but, you know, going home whole and uh, that sort of thing is definitely the most important thing. So talking about core value, right? you've heard me say it twice now, but priorities versus values. And I hear often, you know, somebody saying something like uh, safety is our number one priority. Well, it's our number one priority until something else influences that priority. Where if you say it's our value, it's our number one value, it's not as easily influenced by outside circumstances. So priorities are changed, right? Our priority today was to come here and do the training, but there are some things that could have happened that that priority could have changed a little bit because of outside influence. It's something a bit more important. Not that safety training is not important, but occasionally something trumps that. So values are who you are, how your organization is made up of. No matter what you, you're doing, it's implied, it's known, everybody understands that it's not to sacrifice safety to get this task done. So it's not as easily influenced by outside circumstances. And that's why I like to refer to safety being more of a value than a priority. Let's talk about the foundation. When you boil it down and you take a look at a safety and health program and the foundation, what you're trying to do with it, there's two distinct parts. One are the hazards and the hazard controls um, that you establish from what you do. And the second one is the human element, which is the more difficult one, um, in my opinion, to, uh, to try to make sure it's a good, firm, strong foundation. Um, the human element is, is, is very critical in being sure that what you're doing um, has a system, has a process um, that people understand that, look, we're not here to sacrifice any safety whatsoever. Um, digging down, really, that's where it is. That's the roots of the safety and health is your hazard controls um, measures along with um, the human element and coupled, coupled in with that. So talk a little bit more when you, you boil down and you say, all right, what, what are the hazards that we encounter in our workplace and how do we control those hazards? So it's basically, what do we do? 
what are the hazards associated with what we're asking um, ourselves, our employees, our team members to do? And then simply what control measures do we need to be sure that that risk is at a level in which we can manage um, um, per the value of what we're doing? So real quick, another little slide here. What hazards are you exposed to in your work environment? Traffic, yes. <laughs> I swear to God, people uh, try to run us over, right? I do a fair amount of running. So um, I, I, no matter what I wear, it seems like whether I got flashing lights or, or, or high vis clothing or something like that, it seems like nobody ever sees me. Either that or they're trying to run me over, one or the other, I'm not sure. So lots of traffic, slip trips and falls. Yep, that's a good one out there. Yep, some chemicals, right? We always want to use the chemical that's the most uh, or the least dangerous, right? Heavy equipment. Yep, we're back and we're working with heavy equipment all the time. Um, it only knows what we tell it to do, right? Or what we operate it to do. So weather is another one, cars, no. Okay, good, lots, lots. I like the slip trips and falls, certainly traffic, gunshots. Yep, wish we didn't have to deal with that. It's one of the things we do in size up now in the fire departments is, 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 is doing a 360, but look at the perimeter as well as what um, what we have for an incident. Coworkers, okay. <laughs> kind of intrigues me a little bit. I'd like to ask more about that, but all right, it's lots of equipment. All right, so good, we'll, we'll go on to the next one. Oh, drainage holes too, okay, good. So let's talk a little bit. So those are the hazards that we encounter. That's who's on the call today and how many hazards are associated with it. So let's talk about how to control these hazards a little bit, right? Eliminate or substitute, right? If we can eliminate the hazard, it's not gonna hurt us. If we can substitute like an example of a, a chemical that's hazardous or flammable or something like that, substituting it for a chemical that's less hazardous or less flammable, especially if you're doing hot work type thing. Engineering controls, right? Again, another thing, an engineering control is basically like a guard um, on a rotating part or something like that, an in-running in dip point. So an engineering control actually isolates the hazard from us, right? So unless we do something to, to, to take that engineering control away, like take off the guard or whatever, grab a screwdriver or wrench, that's a pretty good control. Um, some engineering controls that have come out recently um, due to COVID is the, the plexiglass, right? The separation when you go inside um, grocery stores or banks or things of that nature. Um, so that's a little bit about the engineering controls, pretty good measure. That's where I'd like to work most of um, my control measures in is the engineering controls. All right, so I throw some backslashes up here that separation, safe work practices and procedures, right? Good, build good systems, right? Train on those systems, right? And then last but not least is PPE. Oftentimes, you know, when we're thinking about hazards, that's the first thing we think about, but that's really the last measure of defense. So, um, Quick question here, I'm, I'm not gonna take a whole lot of time on it, but why I put the backslashes between the top two control measures and the bottom three is because the top two control measures kind of isolate the hazard from us. The bottom three, the hazard still exists. It relies on who? Us to keep us safe. Um, and when we rely on us to keep us safe, that human element comes into play. And we'll talk a little bit about the human element. So. The why and for what. So I was doing a little uh, walkthrough, actually going through to take a look at the vehicle that you saw um, a few minutes ago that was overturned. And I, and I um, discovered this sort of thing here. So um, one, of the, one of the things um, that jumps out here, hopefully you see it, is the wrong ladder, right? It's a step ladder being used as an extension or a straight ladder, right? And if anybody's ever tried that before, um, they'll tend to slip out on you. Um, so definitely want to make sure you use the right ladder for the job. Why and for what? What do you think? Maybe this hand, this ladder was handy, whatever you can see, they kind of put it on a rug. It's an anti-slip rug to a certain extent, might not slip as much as that if it's on concrete. But you know, why do we do something like that? And for what, right? Why and for what? I don't think anybody on the call is probably paid enough to get hurt, um, but we still take shortcuts. We still have the need for speed, that sort of thing. So the, the infamous or the famous five-gallon bucket, depending on how you want to look at it, I bet you just about all of us on the call has stood on a five-gallon bucket um, to reach something that we've just, um, just you know, a little bit out of reach. So human element's not going to happen to me. I've got away with it before, right? 
Um, I didn't understand the hazards or hazard controls. Every once in a while that pops up. Um, and that's something we got to work on from a system approach, a training approach, something like that. If somebody's doing something and they don't totally understand the hazards. Here's another picture that I like too. Again, why and for what, right? Looks like maybe some Christmas decorations. Can anybody want to guess who took the picture? <laughs> I'm thinking it's the operator of the tractor. So if they're taking a the picture, I wonder where their the control measures or the controls are on the tractor itself. But, but yeah, right, everybody can see this and look at this and say why and for what. But, you know, I bet you some of us on the call have, have done something like this. So we talk about distractions, complacency, lazy, laziness. And oftentimes when you start doing the investigations and the fact finding, it's this need for speed, right? We have to get everything done. Our culture, we have to get everything done yesterday. The need for speed. All right, so that's a little bit about the human element. Let's talk back about the culture again. So we got the two things broken down from a safety health program foundation. One is the hazards and the hazard controls. The other is the human element. And that's the real important thing. We can dig down and we can fix direct causes all the time. But until we get to the root cause, um, we'll continue to have incidences. So from an organizational standpoint, a safety and health culture, the organization, the leadership, um, team members, safety and health professional. But the key to this is the frontline leadership. They buy into the culture. If they're promoting a positive safety and health culture, you're going to have one, hands down. That's the most critical area um, from working in, in 14 years in the public sector and then another Another, I think, 15, 16 in the private sector. Um, you know, that's where you that's where everything gets done, is that frontline leadership for sure. A lot of responsibility there. Um, get, getting it from both sides, from the employees and from management, things like that. It's a difficult job. Um, but if you can get them incorporated into your program, uh, things get a lot easier. So a little bit just to stop because uh, most of us on this call are, are probably doing something in safety and health at times. So one of the things I throw out, because I'm asked this often, is the characteristics of a, of a good safety and health professional. The first and foremost is they have to listen and listen intently, right? Seek to understand before looking to be understood. Others centered. It's not about you. It's about them, right? Remember that. Learn, coach, and lead. Um, those three things. If we can keep that in the back of our mind, learn it, coach it, and then lead it. One of the things I stress in my training program is if you're learning a new skill, learn that skill and then go train somebody else on that skill. It's remarkable how much more you'll remember that, um, that training if you just go out and teach somebody that um, shortly thereafter you took the training. So learn coach lead, I think, is critical. Take what you do seriously, but not yourself seriously. Um, and that's, that's one thing that sometimes um, is difficult, especially if, you know, if you're taking something personal or things like that, but it's so very important that when you're working and, and trying to build a culture, it's again, not about you, it's about the team. Take what you do seriously, but try not to take yourself too seriously. Be able to laugh about yourself a little bit. It's not about me, it's about you. have talked about that. Create the incident in everybody's mind without the incident occurring. If there's one thing that someone asked me, the most critical thing you could do to improve safety and health in your team, in your organization, your company, your department, whatever it may be, is create that incident in everybody's mind without it occurring. You know, if you think about it, if we've gone by an incident lately in um, a car accident per se, right? And you drive by that car accident and you see it probably the next couple, three weeks, maybe even a month, you might drive a little bit safer, don't you? But as that event gets further and further away, you revert back to however you drove before you saw that accident. So, and that, that occurs in many different things, not just car accidents, but um, that sort of thing. So I think if you're, if you're involved in safety, safety and health, you everything kind of create the event in somebody's mind without it occurring, obviously. So a few elements to break down the culture, safety steering team, inspections and surveys, policies and procedures, you know, a, a job hazard analysis or a job safety analysis. That's what those acronyms are for. Training an incident investigation team that talks about what are the facts, not going in and looking for blame, but all right, what are the facts? And digging down, remember the direct calls and the root calls, get to that root calls, right? Yeah, you, it's important to take care of the direct causes. But get to that root cause. Um, you know, the difference, I can give you a real quick example here is, you know, you got a lead cord in the outlet. It makes you run the lead cord through a known walk space, a, new, a known walk way. And you ask um, somebody to maintenance or whoever, um, your supervisor say, you know, I really need this outlet moved so I don't have to plug my lead cord in with this outlet and go across the, 
the, the walking path. Well, you know, somebody trips on a lead cord and somebody comes in to do the investigation. It's like, okay, blame Phil because he's the one that plugged the lead cord in across the walk path. But if you, if you leave it at that, you'll never find out that Phil asked a couple of weeks ago for the lead cord to be moved. So I wouldn't have to plug the lead cord in there. So that incident investigation is critical and it's about fact finding, not fault finding. So, and include near misses. You know, I think all of us have near misses probably most every day. You know, take the opportunity to learn from that and then let others know because chances are if you had that near miss, chances are others, others did as well. So, all right. Talk a little bit about the culture and the elements and the key elements of a positive work environment. It all starts with trust and it circles through leadership, communication, expectations, and so on. So let's break these down a little bit. Trust, long time to build, right? How long does it take to lose somebody's trust? Just like that, right? So build the trust, make the deposits in the relationship, make the withdrawals very few, as, much, as little as you possibly can. One of the big things about building trust do what you say you're going to do. Do what you say you're going to do. And then if somebody shares something in privacy, that means privacy. That means don't go sharing it with somebody else, all right? Um, and being honest and compassionate and sincere. Being who you are, regardless of who you're around, is a really good way of building trust too. If you're changing because people are, are around you are, um, are, 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 are different and you're changing because of that, you know, really take a look at that and say, hey, who, who am I really? And, and, and I'm, I'm proud to be that way. And I, need, I don't need to change because of anybody else, I think. So how do you build trust with your employees? Talk, talk's a good one. I don't like to talk too much, so. Empower, yeah, empower is big. Active listening, yes, active listening, great communication, yep. So a lot of a lot of good stuff here. Time, honesty, open, respect them, yep, yep. Leadership, big part of it, communication, a lot of communication. Be straight up and honest, I like it. All right, really, lots of good responses. Thank you very much. Makes the training so much better when you jump on and, and, and get, some, get some replies out there. Thank you. So leadership, right? Communication, we'll talk about that in a second, but leadership, I just put up some of the things that, you know, I've had um, um, some pretty good luck in working with some really good leaders over the years. So I, I kind of just put up some stuff here that, you know, I think of when I think of some leaders, um, but, uh, you know, you can, you can add to the list and things like that. But I always ask people, just take a pause and somebody that you've been around that you thought was a good leader. Um, and kind of incorporate that in um, to your personality um, when you develop relationships in the workplace. It boils down to relationships. Um, we'll get to that. Positive communication, right? One of the things we probably have the most difficult time of communication, especially if you have to tell somebody something that they don't want to hear, right? Be accountable, right? If you're going to try to communicate something of how you feel or, or what your two cents are in something, be sure you've understood before you look to be, you know, be sure you look to understand before you look to be understood. So I had to back up there a little bit on that one. So listen intently. All right, good enough. You know what I mean, I think. So high expectations, right? Everybody's capable. One of the things I see sometimes is like, you give people the tools and resources to do their job. And then somebody is there the whole time. Oh, no, don't do it this way, do it that way. Or this minor little change here, or there. Give them the resources they need get out of the way because people do want to do a good job. They want to feel good about what they do and they want to bring something to the table. So, and you know, one of the things work is, it is an opportunity um, to continue to learn. I, I learn something every single day. And I, and I know I'm lucky because I get to work with a lot of different people doing a lot of different things. Team spirit, right? It's a big part of us. That's why we, a lot of us volunteer either in the fire service or Boy Scouts or, or both or, you know, that sort of thing. So a lot of people out there in the, in the community helping out. And it's the same thing at work. We want to be part of a team. We want to be part of something that's bigger than who we are ourselves, right? Um, and then, you know, I put a little something on here, cooperation rather than competition. And, you know, don't get me wrong. Competition is a good thing. Um, and cooperation is a good thing. And you can blend the two of them together. Um, so some of you on the call might think that I might be a little bit competitive, but I'm really, I'm really not all that competitive. Just kidding, recognition and appreciation, right? Catch people doing something right. This is one of the things I love to do. I'd much rather catch somebody doing something right and say, hey, nice job, thank you for that, right? 
um, as opposed to going around and, hey, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that, that's wrong, that sort of thing. So recognition, appreciation, one of the things, you know, my, 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 um, my, my career in the private sector, you know, there was incentives, there was bonuses. If you hit your measurables, you know, you, you, you got compensated for that. The change into the public sector, um, we don't have that opportunity, right? We're using the taxpayer dollars and we have to, we have to give as much out of that value-wise um, as we possibly can. So unfortunately, in the, in the public sector, we're generally not um, given, being able to give bonuses or, or, or incentives um, from a money standpoint. But what we can do is say, hey, thank you. Thank you goes a long, long way. If you do say thank you, one of the things uh, I think that make a, a bit of a, a more impact with it is be specific, be sincere. Tell them why you're telling them thank you, right? Approachability. If you're walking around all day, you know, with, a, with some sort of grin on your face or, you know, that sort of thing where, you know, you're not approachable, you know, your arms are folded across your chest, things of that nature. People aren't going to talk to you, right? They're not going to come, you know, uh, you're not going to be able to learn from, from your people. So be approachable, right? Be willing to listen and learn, right? Do people always come at an opportune time um, for you? No, but you know what? Think about it. If they came to you, it's important enough for them to come and, and, and take their time. So be respectful for it, be respectful um, of that. And, and be sure that you, you, you take the time to, to work something through with them. All right, and unfortunately we have correction, right? We're not all perfect. We make mistakes, we're human beings, we're not robots, things of that nature. Um, so, so, you know, once in a while we do have to do some evaluation and correction. When you do that, be honest and sincere. One of the things um, is being fair and consistent because if you're not fair and consistent, people are gonna recognize that, right? Um, another thing here too is deal with items of concern as, as soon as you possibly can. Try to deal with something when it's a small campfire as when it's a big, as opposed to when it's a big forest fire. Um, and another thing, don't wait or let things become personal before you do something about it. Because when you let it become personal, um, it gets a little bit more difficult. So take care of things as they pop up um, and you'll, you know, you'll, you'll keep a pretty good culture. So make it fun, right? Work equals fun, right? What's important now, W-I-N, good acronym, talk about that, um, right? Be productive. Um, and, you know, really the bottom line is what we can do today to make tomorrow better, right? Today is today, but we always have an opportunity to make tomorrow better. So how do you make work fun? This is a bit of a harder question, isn't it? A little bit slower response-wise. Humor, yep. Good. Yep. Good humor though, right? Team meals. Yes. Food. Food's important. Yes. Adam brought up earlier about the, the safety days we do. Make sure the food is good. <laughs> very, very important. Yep. Road races. <laughs> uh oh, I'm not so sure the road race is what I'm thinking of either. Might have a vehicle involved in that. Breakfast. Keep challenging humor. Yep. I thought there'd be more food. Group, there we go. All right, good. Group lunches, team gatherings. Yep. Unfortunately, the last couple of years we haven't been able to gather as much um, as we'd like to. Is certainly what I'd like to. I'd much rather be doing this training in person than over Zoom. I'm Italian, so I talk with my hands. So I've got to keep my hands in my pocket, so I'm not waving them all the time. Cookies. Yep. Laughter. I think laughter and humor, humor added to the work environment is so great. I know it helps me if I go in from one stressful thing and I've got another one coming up, you know, there's a couple offices I can go to and kind of relax a little bit, kid and joke, and then, you know, get ready for the next one because you can't let the workday be, a, you know, cumulative because if you do, you're not going to respond um, to that third, fourth, fifth issue like you would the first issue. So you do have to kind of regroup sometimes, recharge the batteries. Yes, invest in their personal lives. That's unbelievably important right? Know your, know your people, you know, know their kids, know, know what's important to them, help your people feel value. I like that too. All right. Uh, get going. Lots of great. I'd like to keep running with that, but um, like, lots of great answers there. So in the circle, wrapping it up about the key elements of the positive work environment, there's your circle again, trust, leadership, positive communication, you know, some high expectations, right? We want to do a good job. Most, most people want to come to work and say, Hey, what can I do today? to make tomorrow better. All right, so let's talk back into the culture thing here a little bit. We talked about the elements of a positive work environment. We talked about the elements of a positive safety environment. Let's see if we can put them together here a little bit. So foundation of a positive work culture is trust, 
right? We talked about this. Do what you say you're going to do is probably the biggest thing there. Leadership, build great systems, develop good people, build great systems. So if you tuned out a little bit, let's just tune back in here a little bit. What I mean by this is systems, a policy, a procedure, a form, um, something in which is there, it's been built, it's been agreed upon by the team to use, right? And, um, and you've kind of put it in place, battle tested, if you would, and this system works well, right? Look at that first um, before you look at the people, right? But build great systems, develop good people. It's so, so very important to do that. So often, you know, something goes wrong in the work environment and we're quick to blame the people, right? And, you know, sometimes that's, that's quite possibly the reason, um, but sometimes it's also the system or the lack thereof a system. Um, of consistency anyway. Communication, right? Communication is key. We talked about listen this intently before looking to be understood. So seek to understand before looking to be understood. So let's compare this to what would be a positive safety culture, right? So we talked about trust, leadership, and communication for the positive work culture. Well, look at this. If you're looking for a positive safety culture, right, and you're doing something, you're building trust. You know, if you got the leadership from the work culture, it shows leadership. Um, and it also is a great way to do positive, positive communication or communication some, of some way, shape, or form. You do a little toolbox talk in the morning or tailgate talk or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's a great way to talk about that, but also to communicate you know, other things. So team efficiency, those are some things that back from the key elements, right? If you put them together, your team is bound to be efficient, right? So if you think about this, right, you know, how many of us are doing less with more people? I put a little twist to that just to be sure that um, you're listening, but who in here is doing less with more people? Nobody. We're constantly doing more with less people, and it's continuing to be that way. So our efficiencies, our team efficiencies, we have to come up with something so that we can, we can continue to be efficient um, and have less resources um, to utilize for that. Team mission, vision and missions and or visions and goals, right? So these missions, vision, visions, and goals, say that 10 times fast. So make tomorrow better than today in every way. That's our goal, right? What's our team mission? All right, what are the visions that we see and how, how to meet that mission, right? And then how do we make tomorrow better than today? And that's a goal. We have to establish that goal within our work teams and, and, and departments and organizations and things like that. Let's talk about the team efficiency for um, the foundation of that goals, strategies, and tactics, right? This applies not only to your personal life, but it oftentimes determines how successful you are, um, it, you know, in your work environment, in home, things like that. Be inclusive, positive attitudes, things like that. Goals, strategies, and tactics. The whole thing that keeps us all together is communication, right? If, if, if nobody knows what the goal is, it's going to break down. If nobody knows what strategies we're taking to meet that goal, it's going to break down. And then the tactics are really important. If we understand and know what tactics we are, that's going to meet the strategies. Um, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get our, we're going to hit our goals. If we don't know those tactics, we haven't communicated those. Um, we're not going to hit our goal. It'll be much more difficult. Put it that way. Take what you do seriously. Do not take yourself too, too seriously. So that's looking at it from a team standpoint, from your, from your individuals on those teams. Right. We talked a little bit about that earlier. Um, Four things, we break down the team culture. So we talked about not taking ourselves seriously, but taking what we do seriously. Now you add that to the team culture. Treat people right, do your job, all in attitude and all out effort. If you check those four boxes most every day, you're going to have a successful team culture. If we don't check those boxes every day, it's gonna be more difficult to have a team culture. You know, one of the things I, I, I mentioned is I, you know, what I like about my job is working with so many different people doing so many different things. Well, and, and that allows me the opportunity to learn um, each day something different. But it, it also, I, I can walk into a work environment and typically 10, 15, 20 minutes in, I can tell you what kind of culture that team has. And if, if there's issues in that, just by walking in and just talking a little bit. Um, and that's just, I think, from working with so many different groups and identifying that. And I'll tell you the people that, you know, the teams that work together, that don't have injuries, that do it right the first time um, and are efficient, 
are the are the are the cultures that there's a positive culture there. They get along, they talk to each other, things like that. Talked a little bit about this, the work culture. Now we're adding it to the culture. So we want to go from the team to the overall company culture. This is where you really look at the systems and building those systems and looking at developing good people. Um, and that right starts right from the hiring process right up through. So if we add this together and we talked about the efficient work culture so that we do have an opportunity to maybe do a little bit more um, with less people and we blend it all together is safety. Am I gonna hurt myself or someone else? If I am, then I need to do something different, right? Quality, am I doing it right? So is what I'm going to do, what, I, what, what the finished product is gonna be is right. If it's not gonna be right, why would I keep doing it, right? Stop right then and there fix it and then redo, right? So often, sometimes we're working and I've catch myself at doing this. It's like, you know, why am I doing this? Because it's gonna be wrong. <laughs> I need to change it and, and do it right the first time, right? And then be productive. As I'm doing something right now, is it worthwhile, right? And that doesn't mean shoveling all day long. Um, am I doing something worthwhile? Building relationships on your team is worthwhile. And there's all kinds of different ways of doing that. So, but think about that a little bit. If you're, if you're adding, you know, some negativity to the work environment, when you ask yourself that question, am I doing something worthwhile right now? If you're building negativity, ah, I'm not so sure that is um, something that's um, productive. And then that equals the overall efficiency. And then we look at the overall peak efficiency and the options to that, right? We got to talk about safety. We got to talk about quality. Um, we got to talk about productivity, right? Those are the three things that we're measuring for the most part, right? Um, with the production, so talk a little bit now going back to the positive safety and health culture and what that may be, right? Encourage people to think things through. So when we're talking, when we're doing jobs and things like that, um, we need everybody to be thinking about what they're doing, what they're tasked with and have the ability to think those things through. The dominoes, and I like to just pause a little bit about this and explain the dominoes. So, you know, we all have the ability um, we're all a domino, if you would, right? So if you put these dominoes across the table and you line them up, um, like we did, we used to do when we were kids or whatever, right? Make these long rows of dominoes and then and then knock the first one over and watch them all fall. So if we're all dominoes in the work environment and that last domino falling signifies an incident or you know a fatality or serious injury or an event that simply we do not want to have happen in the work environment, right? If, if we've got a good team put together, if we've got a good positive safety and health culture, each one of us has the opportunity to pull that domino out. If we pull one of those dominoes out, the last domino will never fall. And, and that's what I mean by that is everybody has to have the opportunity to pull their domino out so that we can prevent that last domino from falling. And then everybody has a chance to go home whole every day. And that's the, that's the bottom line is, you know, we're not paid. I don't believe anybody on this call is paid enough to get hurt at work. Um, why do we work? We work to do things that we want to do outside of work, right? We work, you know, for a number of different reasons. But, you know, one of the things I'm thinking all of us would answer is that I want the opportunity to make some money so that I can do some things that I want to do outside of work. If you're hurt, oftentimes you don't have the opportunity to do that something outside of work. Um, so that, I like to hone in an awful lot on, hey, the goal here is everybody goes home a whole every single day. So another concept when we start talking about your department, developing your team within your department, there's three different things. We talked about the four different things about doing your job, all in attitude, all out effort, right? Um, pride, passion, and drive are three things that you take a look at, I think. If you're a leader, if the people on your team have pride, passion, and drive, it's contagious. The rest of your team is going to have that. If one of those factors are not present, on your team, um, it's gonna make things a bit more difficult. So the pride, passion, and continual drive to make a difference, to make a positive difference each and every day. Um, think about those three attributes and, and, and what do you bring individually and you know members of your team um, to the table? Because that sort of thing is, um, is really ultra beneficial when it starts to building teams. You think about it, you know, does it 
require any more effort to not have this, to not have the pride, the passion, the drive, the all in attitude, the all out effort? Does it really, does it really take any more effort to have that as opposed to not have that? It's an interesting thing I think about sometimes. I don't believe it's any more effort um, to maintain pride, passion, and drive through an all in attitude and all out effort as it does not to have that. Um, so overall team culture, a picture here of one of the, one of the teams, one of the village neighboring or uh, area of village departments, right? How is your team's culture, right? And promoting the why, the, the work culture and the, the why of it, right? Team performs work safely, right? Team performs the work safely. So the work gets done, but it gets done safely. We can't afford for somebody, you know, you think about it, somebody's out of work just from, uh, how do we replace that person these days, right? How do you replace the experience thing? Now, let alone that, you know, we talked a little bit about the, the factors and relationships and people getting hurt, we'll finish up with that. But, you know, think about, you know, hey, it's, what's the, what's the, what's, what's going to happen if we don't do the work safely, right? Team performs the work right the first time, right? Right. We talked a little bit about that, right? If we're going to do something, we might better do it right because otherwise we're just going to have to repeat it. And then team per performs the worthwhile work, the, the, the work we ensure that it's worthwhile, effectively and efficiently, that sort of thing. It, this all helps us hit our budgets too, our, our line items, right? And then probably the biggest thing is shows your team that they matter and you care. So promoting positive work culture, the why of it, the, perform, the team work, performs safely, does the job right the first time, um, and it performs worthwhile work effectively and efficiently and just what we need, right? Because we're doing more with less resources all the time. Show your team they matter and you care. That's promoting a positive work culture. Blending it in for its positive safety culture, improves the morale. It's inclusive. Right, so we're not excluding people. It's all about relationships, right? When you look at relationships, there's the deposits and the withdrawals, right? You want to make sure that each relationship you build as many more deposits and, and as few to little withdrawals as you possibly can. Teams, right? Teams, team, team approach, right? Safety, quality, productivity. So it makes sense, right? If you're promoting a positive work culture, you're promoting a positive safety culture as well. All right, focus a little bit. Culturally ingrained safety, low frequency, high risk, keep them in the back of your mind, right? We talked about that when we first started here. Culturally ingrained safety, safety is a value. It's not a priority, it's a value. It's not as easily influenced by outside circumstance. We gotta get this done, we gotta get this done now. We don't need, we gotta get this done now safely. We need that, hey, we're gonna get this job done, but everybody knows that safety's involved in it. And incident prevention, right? And something along incident prevention is be sure that that, you know, that incident is in people's mind um, without it happening. That's a big way to prevent incidences. Frontline leadership is key to the positive safety and health culture. Build great systems, develop good people, create an environment of trust. Do right and do what you say you're going to do, right? Do what you say you're going to do. Big deal. Trust is probably the biggest most fundamental building block there is when you talk about safety and health culture. So why should we promote a safety and health culture? While you're, while you're answering that, I'll throw out a couple of things. Um, one is that, that high frequency, low risk. Um, if you ever get a chance, Google Gordy Graham or Gordon Graham, he does an excellent job with classifying risk versus reward. Um, it's well worth the time. I think it's maybe 10 minutes video, but it, it's, he, he does a really good job describing trust. Um, and the theme of it is a slow down. We don't need to do everything yesterday. Slow down and think it through. So, and um, all right, so long-term investment, that's what your employees deserve, retention of employees so we can accomplish goals. Yeah, a lot of reasons. People, right, we're important, right? I like, like it. it, you know, the comment, that's what our employees deserve. That's the right mindset, right? We, we hire people with the expectation they're going to be able to go home whole every day with everything they came with, right? With the same amount of bones, same amount of blood, same amount of skin they came to work with, they go home that way, 
I like to say sometimes I'd rather have somebody come in and go home better than what they came to work, you know, so good for all long term and positive work environments, happy and productive employees. That's right. Absolutely. I firmly believe the better your culture, the more work you're going to get done, the safer you're going to do it. And you're not going to have to repeat that work. All right. Super good answers. Thanks again for all the responses with the with the with the with the questions here. It certainly helps with the training, um, especially when you can only do it through Zoom. All right, so effective training, right? It's the why of it. Let's talk about it. Um, effective training. This is a, a picture of our chainsaw guy. He was born with a chainsaw in his hand, I swear to God. So effective safety training improves trust, right? Very important, builds morale, positive culture, helps ensure that safety is a cultural value. And the bottom line is everybody goes home whole every day. Everybody goes home whole every day. One of the things, um, I don't know what we are, we're not too bad on time. So the why of it, right? Preventing the incident from occurring. Right. This is this is going to stick in my my head for a long time. And I know, um, you know, it's going to stick in a lot of people said this is not a picture that you want to see. This is not something you want to think about. Um, there's probably a few people on the call that that really know me. And they're, you know, they probably at one point in time said, Phil, you know, why is Phil Spezio doing safety? My God, <laughs> I can't ever believe that Phil, Phil, Phil Spezio would have got into safety. But um, quite a few years back, actually, it was a week after Jeremy was born. Uh, my second son is that we had a call. I was in the fire service as well. We had a call for a laboring uh, from a neighboring department, structure fire in a in a restaurant bar type thing. Prospectors Route 29, Saratoga, um, just outside of Skyville. So you know we got a call for that, and um, you know I I wasn't listening to the scan or anything. Woke up to our, our our alert tones, and one of my buddies in the in the rescue truck said, "Hey, have you been listening to the call?" And I said, "No, I I um, literally woke up to my pager." And he said, hey, things aren't good. It sounds like um, some firefighters are hurt. They got caught in, in some sort of a, a flashover or something like that. And, you know, I know I knew the folks really well, played softball with them and things like that. And, you know, long story short, we went in, um, knocked it down. I knew things, new firefighters were hurt and things like that. I came back out and the chief came over to me, grabbed the hold of me and said, hey, Phil, I need to go run their, the, the neighboring department's uh, truck. And they said, what do you mean? And I go run their truck. Uh, they're pulling their guys off. They, they you know things aren't good they lost somebody and you know from that time on I think um, that changed me a little bit because um, when everything goes right when you have systems built in place you have good people trained and things like that you know there's still risk involved and still still bad things can happen so I think that had a a, a big thing on um, helping me a big big uh, I guess uh, influence on me you know, switching gears a little bit and thinking a bit more about safety and health and in, in, in the culture and it matters type thing. So, all right, so let's wrap this thing up here, almost almost to an hour. So safety and health matters, work cultures matters. Bottom line, most importantly, relationships matter. Um, incident, every incident is a number, right? Every number is a life. With that life, there's some sort of story, many stories, family, friends, and coworkers. So that's why I, I stress each and every day relationships matter. And that's why we do this is to keep people whole, keep people going home every day. So bottom line, everybody goes home whole every day. Trust, leadership and communication is probably the, the, the most you can concentrate on each day. Um, and then making safety a core value. So in other words, it's not easily influenced by outside circumstances. Um, safety is a true core value where even though you may not say it all the time, everybody knows that, hey, the most important thing here is safety. So that's going to wrap up. Um, I'm not sure if there's some questions out there, Amanda or Adam. Um, here's some upcoming webinars. I'll jump on here coming up. February 1st is the culverts. Um, February 8th is the finding, retaining, and motivating employees. That's going to be a good one too. Um, 15th work zone, obviously most important uh, traffic, right? People in the, in, the, in the training today talked about traffic. So work zones are important and obviously purchasing and financing is right up there too. So some really solid upcoming webinars um, being put on by Cornell and, and what they're doing. And I, I got to say a big thank you to, to the Cornell folks. They've been a huge help in, in developing our programs over the years with the safety days and the toolbox talks and coming in um, and being a great resource for training. So. Thanks, Phil. Do you, yep. do you, have, the, do you have the dates for the safety days yet uh, coming up? Uh, yeah, I do. It's the third week of June, Adam, um, you know, without pulling off my calendar That's thing, but yeah, it's, it's so highway schools, the first week of June, right? 
So it would be that, so a week in between, and then our safety days are the following Tuesday and Wednesday of that. So third week of June, third Tuesday, third Wednesday of June. Awesome. Well, so. thank you so much, Phil. Great webinar today. Um, and just like you said, we have these, uh, these other wonderful webinars coming up. And also, we are open for registration for our spring in-person workshops all around the state. You can just go to our website, and you'll see those. So, um, but yeah. Awesome to see everybody. Thank you so much. We'll uh, we'll get you your certificates of, of attendance and um, and uh, stay safe out there. So Phil, thanks again. And yep. We'll thanks. Thanks for having me, Adam. Absolutely. Take care, everyone.